this. So would you just leave it here this morning? We'll clean it up, I promise. We'll clean it up. We'll get it. We'll, we'll bag it, get it out later. You know what I'm saying? We'll pray it out of here. But if you would this morning, would you just leave it here? This morning, if you would, find Romans. Romans in the New Testament. I would say Matthew, Mark, Luke. What's the rest? Matthew, Mark, Luke. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke. John. Romans. Oh, Acts. Oh, you Bible drillers, I tell you. This morning I want to talk to you about the encouragement to courage. Encouragement to courage, Brother Huff. Let's get used to that new name. Totally. And to our veterans again this morning, our gratitude for your service. I, I never served, but I thank you for the freedom that I have. And I know there's many others here and there's many across this country today that are taking you for granted for the things that have been sacrificed. But I do thank you for that and, and thank you for your courage to serve. And would you join me now as I asked you in Romans chapter 5 this morning. And be kind to wait for me there if you would. And as they say sometimes, I'll be there soon. Just wait. Uh, and while you're turning there, I, wanna, I wanted you to consider this story. One summer morning as Ray Blankenship was cooking breakfast, he gazed out of his window and saw a small girl being swept along in the rain-flooded drainage ditch beside his home. He knew that further down the stream, the ditch disappeared with a roar underneath a road and then emptied into a main culvert. Ray dashed out the door and raced along the ditch, trying to find to get ahead of the floundering child, when just as time was running out, Ray hurled himself into the deep, churning water. Blankenship surfaced and was able to grab the small girl's arm. They tumbled in over in, and with about three foot of the yawning cover, Ray's free hand felt something protruding from the bank. He clung to it desperately, but the tremendous force of the water tried to tear him and the child away. His thoughts... If I can just hold on until help comes. Ray did better than that. By the time the rescuers arrived, he had pulled the girl to safety, and both were treated for shock in a successful success story. Amen? Amen. A, a wonderful, uplifting story. A story to inspire. A story to encourage courage. Amen? Encouraged courage. You know, many prayers have been spoken for the opportunity of change in our country over the past few weeks, if not the past few years. Amen? Amen. And in the reality of the recently won opportunity, may I encourage you to courage, for now is not the time to relax within this victory, but, but to bolster our willingness to strengthen God's presence with this in, within this country. Amen? Amen? It's time to take it forward, folks, right? Yep. As, as we would not be the first country to make a comeback, right? right? And I'm not talking about a financial comeback, and I'm not talking about a physical comeback. Right. I'm talking about a spiritual comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me share this with you this morning. It's great to have leadership that speaks God, talks God, and is speaking direction to God, but that change, as I'm going to tell you, will come from the men and women's heart in this room this morning. Amen. See, it's a Christian thing, right? It's a Christian thing. Since many times the art Achilles heel to victory's effort is to celebrate far too long or to forget the victory far too soon. About two weeks from now, we'll be on to something else, won't we? But therefore, not realizing the opportunity that has been given us, has been provided to us to make a change in our country, to continue to, to push and to bolster this opportunity. As quite honestly, this is where many Americans will leave it. Many Americans have already left it. The elections are over, right? It's, it's done. He's in. It's good. It's, everything's great. And sadly, many Christians as, uh, will do the same as they will, they, as many will accept the victory and consider it's done, right? I did my part. I prayed. Hmm? Which is a great thing, but the fact of the matter is the battle's been won, but the war, war is far from over this morning. Amen. It's far from over. Therefore, I encourage you to courageously continue for the battle may have been won, but this war is far from over. And, and, and then this is the thing we need to look at. You know, courage is a very interesting characteristic. It's defined as having the mental or moral stamina to go forward, to venture, to persevere, as to withstand, and here's the key word, to withstand uncertainty. Anybody got any uncertainty this morning in their lives? Hmm? Any uh, a lack of assurance in your life? Anybody got any 100% insurance in your life? No. Well, you do in one. In the will of God, right? In the power of God this morning. See, that word uncertainty, as to face danger, fear, and difficulties while placing ourselves knowingly yet, un, knowingly yet willingly at an unusual risk. The willingness to try against all odds, to step up and to step out. A willingness to do something that may actually frighten you. I'm, very, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to witness God. Witnessing, right? Mm -hmm. To put our place in an uncomfortable position for God this morning. 
Interestingly enough, the English word courage is derived from the Latin word courage with cor, C-O-R, at the core of the word. And I thought that was interesting because C-O-R in Latin means heart. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And heart, which meant to be motivated from the heart to do something brave, to stand and witness our living God. Amen. Amen. Such as to live as Christians, as to live as followers of Christ, to show the contrast against the growing odds of paganism as to have the courage to live and not just speak Christ. Man, it's easy to get, in, to get, to get, to get excited in here this morning, isn't it? Good music, good songs, good hearts, good people, good energy. It's, it's, it's great to get fired up. But the question is, when you step away, will you not just speak it, but will you walk it? Hmm? Will you talk it? Will you, will you represent that, therefore showing the core, the heart of Christ that exists within every one of you because of your salvation to him? Which by our natural design, it goes against everything that we know and feel, right? My natural man said, did I, I think I touched on this last week. I had to watch this thing right here, but I think my natural man said, roll over and go back to sleep this morning, right? My natural man said, oh, the sun's coming out today. It's going to be a beautiful day. I could spend it in a lot of other places except listening to Brother Tim yell at me for 30 minutes. <laughs> right? But the bottom line is, this is the odds that we go against to understand that it, it, this is what in today is the time to continue not to rescind the opportunity of the victory provided. Stand up. Stand up. For Jesus, amen. amen. I mean, it's a, it's, 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 it's a refueling of our hearts and souls. It's, it's the hope that we've been praying for. And now that it's arrived, don't step backwards, but step forward. Amen. 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 Now, in Romans this morning, chapter 5 and verses 1 through 5, we find this encouragement to encourage from Paul while writing the winter of AD 57. And who better to encourage us than from the heart that, uh, that someone with Paul's battle scars, right? Anybody else wearing any more scars than we know of Paul in his spiritual pursuit after salvation? Uh, this man uh, had been there and, and more, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he lived it. You know what I'm saying? And, and all within the pursuit of Christ, as he now states in verse 1. Read with me if you would. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have the peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we also have access by faith into grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now let me tell you, there's a lot of verbs, there's a lot of action in that one sentence right there, that one, one statement. Yeah, you realize that? See, it says, we stand in the opportunity of the victory of a risen Savior. We've been standing there for a long time. In salvation, we, we've had a risen Savior for, for, for forever now. And to have access to grace in which we stand, rejoicing in the hope of his truth, one nation, indivisible, under God, with freedom and justice for all. I think I just blended something together there, but have you heard that last part before? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that was intentional. Why? Because that is the country we are supposed to be. Amen. Not led by not necessarily a leader, but led by Christians and Amen. their willingness to stand up and witness Christ. Amen. See, the burden lays on us as the church. I know the separation of church and state and all the great stuff that we said over the years, but the bottom line, this country was established on God, for God, and by God. Amen. 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 Let me encourage you to encouragement this morning. See, and if you look at this next verse, it says, and not only that, at least in my text, you may have a slightly different text, but and not only that, and I got tickled when I read that, as, as Paul sounds like one of these modern-day shopping channel salespeople, right? And there's more. <laughs> If this is not enough that you can have faith, have the peace of God, that you can rejoice in him, that you can stand on him, that you can have the hope of glory of God, wait and wait, there's more. It's a two for sale. It's when the ladies come home and say, we got four of them 50% off, right? That's what Paul kind of sounds like. And yet what Paul is about to announce may not excite many people because this goes against our natural being as Paul speaks to the glorification of our troubles and problems and issues Oh, yuck. That, that, that's what he's about to tell us. He says, listen, as he continues, and not only that, we also glory in our tribulations. Now, let me ask you this morning. Anybody got any tribulations? Anybody? Oh, good. Only four people. That's awesome. Right? Oh, good, good. That's great. Right. Nobody else got any problems. Just me and my wife. Well, Barb, we need we're going to have to pray hard. Anyway, but Paul said we also glory. And Paul would now introduces what we, what, what we gain from such complications. Therefore, this, this proves that Paul was, was the first man to introduce our modern-day workout mantra, which was no pain, no gain. Huh? Oh, my. Listen to this. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce 
perseverance, mm -hmm. perseverance character, and character produces hope. All my hope is in yeah. Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why I can stand. Right? That's why I can stand. And this, and, and these combined ingredients, it, it, it introduces into our lives our courage through Jesus Christ to be able to endure what life brings to us. Not by our ability, that's the beautiful part, not by my ability, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul goes on to tell. Therefore, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ever heard that passage of Scripture? Mm -hmm. I can. I can. Can I do it? No. I can through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I can endure the tribulations and the issues of my life because of my Father, Savior. My God can help me. He strengthens me in all things. How can I endure the, the, the issues of my life? In Him, through Him, by Him. And when I reach that point, then, then there, there, look at verse 5. And, and when I reach that point, there is no disappointment. Look at look at. And this hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out on our... I love that word poured, right? What's poured? Yeah. Right? He didn't say dribble. He didn't sprinkle it. He said, he said, Miss Peggy, he said, poured. Hmm? You ever poured syrup on pancakes? Do you dribble it out there real easy? You one of those that, that just put a little bit on it? No. No. You take full well and put a half a bottle on three pancakes, don't you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> right? That's the whole part of it, right? It wasn't there with the cake, it was the syrup, right? He poured it poured, and that's what he says, right? Because the love of God has been poured out on our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Who was given to us here on this on this earth to what? Well, one of the things that he does is convict us. A lot of negative conviction, but one of those directional convictions when he says, Are you sure? Right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that's best for you? Are you sure that's best for your family? Are you sure that's the best decision to what? To glorify your Father God who has given you life. See, that was the whole point in it. Are we humbled enough to realize? what we were given, and if we were, are we willing to support that and celebrate it in the fact that God gave me life. He picked me up and gave me a second chance in my life. Amen? Amen. That's the whole point. He says, it does not disappoint, but it will not disappoint you. If you'll truly give him yourself, he will not disappoint you. But here's the deal. All in. Mm -mm, don't do 50-50 on him. It don't work at 50-50. It don't work at 90-10. It don't work at 7. It works when you're all in. Right? God said, I'll pour the blessings of the Holy Spirit. I'll pour, I'll give you the courage, the courage to endure, the courage to witness. He, he who lives within us will give you all these things. You know, in 1 Timothy, Paul wrote, uh, in 1 Timothy uh, 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 chapter 1 and verse 7, or maybe 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, forgive me of that, one of those Timothys, he said, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a heart of love and a heart of courage. There are no cowards in Christianity. If you're going to stand up and witness Christ in this lifetime, you better not be a coward. You know why? Because you're going to be different. Mm -hmm. You're going to look different, smell different, act different. You're going to, bigger thing is, you're going to look at life differently. Amen? Amen. You're going to look and respond to life. Well, how about this? I don't know the answer, but let me, I think my battery just ran out, didn't it? Uh, 2 Timothy. No, 2 Timothy. No, I'm still on. Sorry, I thought I lost. Did I lose? No. Yeah. yeah. I you did, lost. didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Well, I'll just talk. Hey, Mike, turn this one on, would you? Wow. I'll have to stand still now. Uh -oh. That's oh, always no. that's troublesome. There we go. <laughs> Testing. Uh -oh. We lost something else besides. Hello. 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 Mm. I don't know. Pardon me. I was all wound up too. Well. Testing. One, two. Hello. Testing. Got a short today. I am. I got short today. All right. I'll do my best here. Here we go. As this is the gift from Christ, is the courage to try, the courage to fail, the courage to succeed. Wait a minute. I want to back up here just a moment. I'm sorry. I do. I don't want to waste that right there. I don't want to waste that this way. Yeah. Everybody's awake. Maybe you just need to go get batteries. All my hope is in Jesus. We'll make it through this, y'all. Y'all, that's just Satan trying to get in the middle of this because it was getting good, yeah. right? right. Let, me, let me get back here. Let's go back to Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy said, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a heart of love and a heart of courage. How can I face the things that are coming at me? I put them in my God's hand, right? And in this gift to us from Christ is the courage. Now listen to me. This is the part I didn't want to waste. To, the courage to try, right? 
the courage to fail, the courage to succeed, the courage to accept forgiveness, but more than anything, the courage to live a life as Christians. Life is about the effort to try to live your life in Christ, to witness Him. Amen? Amen. Not, not to back off. And this is the time we don't back off. We step forward that much stronger, right? The, the courage to witness Christ. This is what Christ has done for me. That's the witness of Christ. And it's different for every one of us. But to the same knowledge, it's the same fact over and over. What I gave Him, He returned to me purified, Amen. glorified, and relieved. Amen. Amen? Forgiven of my sins. Which would, which would be to live as... I can't do life without him. See, that's the mental attitude. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning knowing I cannot do life without my Christ. Amen. Right? My Christ who what? Strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's see, that's the part. The hope that is built within the ability for, for us to preserve because we know the truth of salvation. Here's the truth of God's word. That, that by believing in him, we face no uncertainty in death. There should be no, no apprehension in passing this world. Does it make us nervous? Honestly, to some degree it does. But should there be? No, because he's read a whole book on where you're going and how it works, right? To be absent here is to be what? Present there. That last blink, that last moment, that last sigh, I'm home with heaven. Why? Because I know the promise to be true in my Christ Jesus this morning. Amen. See, I know that promise because I know where my life lays this morning. There's no uncertainty. I don't have to sit home at night and wonder, am I going to heaven? Am I saved? No, I am. Why? Because the promise is true, Amen. right? That, that's, the, that's the point, that the, the hope that is built within the ability for us to per persevere because we know the truth, that by believing in him, we face no uncertainty. Therefore, in this second life, this reborn life that we have by Christ is in a selfless act to die in our place. That, that he, if, if you will, that, that selfless act that he did for us, that he would bear my sins. That's why I said this morning, if you're dragging something with you this morning, would you just leave it here? Amen. Maybe not. I'll just he's, talk as loud as I can. He's trying that? hard. Hey, he is this morning. <laughs> See, that, that's the point to it, that the second life that we have to be reborn, to have the courage based in his knowledge of the truth to overcome where we are and who we are, right? Which is the, the, to witness to the world around us against all odds of this world. We cannot win. We, we cannot only win in Christ. We've already won. We're already victorious. We were victorious before the election. We were victorious before we were born. We were victorious on our first breath. We'll be victorious on our last breath because Jesus Christ gave us hope and life. Amen. All because of what? We accepted him. All because I just simply said, God, I can't do this without you. I can't do this. I cannot persevere this world without you. And this is why in the face of tribulation in our lives, which will be the uncertain moments, the difficult times, the fi times filled with trials of life that we can endure. That's when we hold on the most, right? I mean, it truly is, which is by his spirit allows us also in the place of bitterness and frustration to be able to glorify him. And I may have mucked that a little bit trying to read and keep up with this microphone, but the bottom line of what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that we should celebrate, not grow bitter, right? Oh, my life is hard. Guess what? It is difficult. As I shared with a young man this week, life at best, have you found it to be different? Life at best, not being negative or pessimistic, but life at best is difficult every day, is it not? Amen. Then why would I not want to go through it with someone that's already walked it? Amen. Amen. Someone that already knows it. See, regardless of the world's claim to greatness, this, this is the life I endure until I see glory. See, for, for as all people, we should understand the difficult times. And, and, and our lives produce to endure, uh, endurance to build character, to give us confidence, uh, to give us confidence and assurance in our lives. That word this morning that I'm positively assured in my life that I know where I'm going and I know who my father is. Amen. Therefore, I can face this situation. The willingness to encourage courage this morning is what I spur you to, what I encourage you to do, it, which, is what, which is to say, put your arm around somebody this morning. And with all confidence in Christ, tell them, you can do this. And it's not a Home Depot commercial. And it's not a DIY commercial. It's a fact of life. You can do this as through Christ, which strengthens you. Trust me, I've seen it. I've lived it. I'm living it. I can assure you, tomorrow does come, and this shall pass. Amen. 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 Why? Because of the promise of my Father God this morning. Amen. Amen. See the power that's in that? You may... Make. You, my beloved friends, can endure this because if you're allowed, Christ has given you the courage to do so, not by my ability. 
How many have you realized as you get older that your strength is not what it was when you were 20 years old? Huh? See, if we only had eyes to realize that our spirituality is the same way. Because when, when we think we got the world by the toe, right? Got it all under control. Anybody ever been there? Job's good. Life's good. Money's good. House is good. Everything's good. Ever been there? Yeah. For a short time. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Just about the time it starts to feel good, it doesn't anymore, does right. it? Right. And in the reality of it, you have a choice to either live in depression and live in, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's so bad. It's so horrible. I just, don't, I just can't make life. Or you can stand up and know that you have a Father God that is going to give you a new body, a new soul, a new place, and you are going to rise to live again. Amen. Amen. That's the promise of a God that we know this morning. You know, King David wrote in Psalms 27, 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and you shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And we talked about this last week with King Jehoshaphat, right? Mm -hmm. Father God said, here, God said, hey, there's, there's an army coming to annihilate you. I want you to go down and do what? Stand still. Stand still and wait. And we talked about this. That doesn't mean just hushing this part. That means hushing this part. Hmm? Anybody got any mental overloads this morning? Yeah. Got a list in your mind, roller dixing through there at 1,000 miles an hour? We all got them. We say, well, when I retire, I'm not going to have them. I hear more from our retired congregation than I do from the ones that aren't retired. You are some of the busiest people I've ever seen in my life. I'm just telling you. Oh, I can't be. I got I got, I got We all got a list. That's because we never rest this and place it in the hands of God. Amen. It'll be okay, right? It'll be all right. King David said, wait on the Lord. Why? Because in the trials of life in him, we gain the endurance to have the courage to witness so that we can stand in the face of all the adversities in our lives. So that we can deal with them because we know the truth. We've been told the truth. And the truth of our God is our resolve, which is Jesus Christ, the rock that we stand on. Every song this morning could have witnessed this sermon to you today. Mm -hmm. If you go back and read those words and those songs, it could, I, could, I was thinking, that I could just sing those songs again and we could go home. Mm -hmm. But then you wouldn't get your money's worth because you have to be, you know, you have to have a message, right? <laughs> But honestly, if you would have, if you read the songs in those songs, you would have known that, right? You, you could have seen that. Therefore, consider, seriously consider, when, wherever you are in your life, wherever you are in your life this morning, and by whatever means you arrived there, because some of us arrived there by self-inflicted gunshot wounds, didn't we? Amen. Huh? We'd like to blame somebody else. I'd rather blame Bobby this morning for some of the decisions in my life, but I guess, Bobby, I'll just have to take responsibility for my own decisions, right? So however you ride there, uh, and, 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 and to borrow a statement from John Wayne in the, in the Sons of Katie Elder movie, be it your fault, my fault, or nobody's fault. I just love that part. <laughs> They're fixing to have a big shootout, right? Oh, John says, be it your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. Whatever condition you presently find yourself in, understand that you can persevere, you can endure, and overcome it because of the hope he gave you. No matter whose fault it is, accept the direction of God in your life and rest. Amen. Amen. Put this world aside and have some rest. Of course, you know, in this, another movie of John's, having a movie moment this morning. You know, in True Grit, he made a statement, was, was made this, you're a pretty bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. <laughs> now, I'm not one-eyed, but I am getting fat, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, it's spoken, yes, this is bold, but factual promises made from the words of Almighty God. Amen. Right? Stand still and know your Father God, right? Amen. See, see, it, as fault and failure has no existence in the realm of a holy God, only forgiveness with the courage to continue. What I'm trying to say to you politely when it comes to witnessing Christ, you cannot fail because you're constantly forgiven of the mistakes, right? That's the beautiful part about it. Father God strengthens me, stands me back up, and as I tell you, he will never put you in a place that he knows you can't handle. Why? Because he saved you for a purpose, to witness him, to witness him this morning, the courage to try. You know, consider also Psalms 31, verse 24, which states as well that because of our knowledge of God, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart, all who hope in the Lord. See, unfiltered, unsympathetic and simplified, if I could please. It means, oh good gosh, stop belly aching and complaining about everything in your life. Get over yourself and go witness the blessings of God has granted you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that is the 
bottom line. For he has given us everlasting life with the promise of heaven and a brand new body. That's what I'm going to get, right? And, and I'm going to tell you, many of us need that new body because you've abused this one greatly. Right? Right. Thank you, Chris. About wore it out. Pieces are missing. They're not only just falling off, they're missing. You haven't even seen them in years. And our Father God said, I'm going to give you a brand new one. Hold on, this is but a while. Or as to steal another movie line from the Shawshank Redemption, since I'm on movie line stealing, I guess, you can either get busy living or you can get busy dying. And sometimes, folks, as Christians, we sound like we're dying, right? We All we see is the negativity around us when the fact of life is you have been given life. Life, man. Is it hard? Yes, sometimes it's hard. That's what I said. It doesn't come natural to us what Paul was telling us to praise in our tribulation, right? Uh, I'm praise God for hurting? Amen. Why? Because I know the promise to come true. You see, that's the fact of life. He has raised you from the dead, placed his Father's signature across your heart, pinned your name in the blood of the book of life, and placed a robe of protection around you as an heir to the kingdom of God. What have we have to complain about? Amen. Huh? Is life hard? He told us in Genesis, right off the bat, look, chapter 3, life is going to be hard. Amen. And ever since then, we've been going, I don't like it. You shouldn't like it because we didn't want to go there in the first place, right? <laughs> but now that we are, leave it at the foot of Jesus and stand up and realize and have courage to witness a life of Christ. Yeah. That, that's, that's what we talk about. Oh, my goodness. Mm, we, that, I love this part. I love this part. I love this part. Let me, let me share some words from David in that same text from Psalms 31, verse 1. It says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. My, be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, your name's sake leads me and guides me. Pull me out of the net which life has secretly set for me, for you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. I commit my life. You have redeemed me, O Lord of truth. Amen. How about reading that tomorrow morning before you get on your list of issues, problems, and woes? Amen. Amen. O Father God, if that's not good enough, in verse 14, David said, But as, as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Huh? Next time you're facing a mountain, how about those words? Father God, I don't know how I'm going to overtake this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to get back out of this hole I've dug. But I trust you, O Lord. And I say, you are my God. Huh? You are my God. Many times are, many times are you in, in, I'm in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies to whatever in my life perse persecutes me. Make your face shine upon me. Save me for, for, for your mercy's sake. These are the words of David. Amen. These are the words that we can implement in our lives today to change the way to celebrate our tribulations and change the way that we look at, at, at our life and change the way that we witness our life to others. If we talk like the world and sound like the world, then you have to ask yourself, where is your God? Amen. Amen. Finally, in verse 19, David said in that same chapter of Psalms 31, he said, oh, how great is your goodness. Hmm? Do you know who your God is this morning? I mean, sometimes we wander off, don't we? We forget. We leave him. He's still there, but we wander off and we, we, we think, what, what, what happened? What happened? What, what happened to my... What? It's because we wander off from God, right? Mm -hmm. and, and right here it says, oh my goodness. He said, uh, oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust you. And in verse 21, it says, Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness. For as I said in haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you have heard my voice of supp my supplications, my humble request, my broken request. When I cried out for you, oh, the love of the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. David concludes in verse 24, and he says, be of good courage. That word again, that courage, that willingness to face what is uncertain, to have the willingness to step out, the willingness to witness. Be of good courage as the God shall strengthen our hearts, all of us who hope in the Lord. Amen. This is the God you have this morning. This is the encouragement of courage that I offer to you when you leave here this morning, not to look at, wow, look how my life's ended up. At 50, I can tell you how my life looked. Garbage bag full. Amen? Mm -hmm. hmm? And guess who put me there? 
Take responsibility. Stand up and accept that you can't do this without your Father God and live in the confidence to know that He will. Right? See, He doesn't work. He doesn't. He, all He wants you to do is just try, right? He said, do you need to be perfect? No. Do you need to make? No. You need to try. To try this morning. You know, in the face of this recent political victory in our country, regardless of your choice of sides, I'm not, we have to conclude as Brother Joe prayed earlier, that America has spoken and said, we want to change, right? We want to change. And no doubt, not everyone who voted was seeking a godly direction in our country, right? We realize that. Which is the very reason this morning that I encourage you to have courage that as Christians, it is our ongoing responsibility to continue the good fight as to encourage courage. Because even in the smallest of contribution, with the right heart into the hands of God, the impact can be massive. And we know this to be true. And one example I could share with you briefly was showed the boy with five loaves and two fish that fed 5,000. Right? Mm -hmm. The willingness to take what you have, whatever, how little you think it is, and put it in the hands of God to watch it change a nation. Amen? Amen. You know, if you recall the story this morning I opened with, then let me share with you the most encouraging part of this true story. Ray Blankenship was awarded the Coast Guard's Silver Life Saving Medal on April the 12th, 1989, which is impressive within itself, right? For in fact, his entire effort was quite heroic, would you not say? I mean, just a guy eating breakfast, right? Runs out and saves a small girl from drowning. That, that's, that's impressive. However, what made Ray Blankenship his, his heroic act, a heroic act wasn't because of his action at all at all. It wasn't the action of his act, nor was it that he was a well-trained Navy SEAL or had some, some skills or something or not an Olympic swimmer. What made Ray Blankenship's effort so courageous was that Ray Blankenship could not swim. Let's let that soak for a minute, right? You see, it's easy to speak Christ. It's easy to attend church. But the question is when you face the issues in your life that you don't have answers for, that make you feel negative, that you don't know how to overcome, then the courage comes with the willingness to stand up and face those, knowing that you don't have the answer but that your God does. Amen. See the encouragement to, concur, to courage, right? See, it was his selfless willingness to place himself at a greater risk to save another. And that is the message of a Christian. Are you willing to put your place, your, yourself in an uncomfortable place in the willingness to tell someone else about Jesus Christ? If you want this victory in America to spread this morning, then understand it needs to come out of our core heart to our mouths so that we can share God in this world. Amen. Amen. Or I'm going to tell you, in a few more years, guess what? We'll go right back where we were. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to press forward. Now is the time to pray harder. Now is the time to stand bolder. Now is the time to have courage to witness God. And now is the time to encourage courage. And you simply do that by putting your arm around someone and telling them, no, you can't do this, but God can. You can't, but God can. See, we all have the resolve this morning to say, your God, I will live you. I will encourage courage. As to understand the larger opportunity that you have presented to us, another opportunity, a second chance, a third chance. I don't know how many chances he's given us in this country to stand up and speak God this morning. Amen. Therefore, I encourage you to courage. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come to you this morning. I hope your words will stir God, will stir hearts this morning. I hope we'll realize who we are, that, the, that, that this victory is wonderful, but it's far, far from over, Father God. But it gives us a, a, a reassurance to stand bold again, God, and take back some things that, that, that most, honestly, most of our nation has said, we want to change. And again, would you remind us that that change comes through the power of Jesus Christ. Give us that strength this morning. 
Father God, for those here this morning that I know that are coming in and dragging things with them that, 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 that won't let go of what they have to, to, to truly be in you, I pray strength to them, God, that they would find you here again this morning. That they would, they, would, they would make a resolution, a resolve to you, God, that they would not wander again, that they would come home. That they would have peace and forgive us and accept the fact that it's, it's just the effort to try. Father God, as we open these altars, I just pray that we will pray for our country, that we will pray for each other, and that we will be that church that will extend an arm to say, yes, you can. You can because of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would stand with me this morning, Brother John, 309. page 309.